right, then we'll get started. You um, got it. So, seven years. Uh, now, nothing about 2016 feels like seven years ago, at least not to me. Um, but we, we finally have the algorithm coming out. And I did take a listen to it, and I'm submitting a review of it uh, along with this interview. So, um, How'd you like it? I loved it. Um, did you like it? I did. I, I liked it a lot. Um, not that there's any bad filter album, um, but I, I ranked this uh, a little higher uh, than a lot of the others, and I really, wow. really enjoyed it. So, cool, great. Uh, that that makes me excited for everyone else to hear it. Uh, I hope everyone else feels the same way because I, I yeah. really liked it. Um. So a lot's happened in seven years, a hell of a lot uh, in the world. Seven and, long years. You know, we've had a lot of political stuff and a lot of uh, <laughs> a whole world shut down and everything else. So uh, what, what's, yeah. been, what's been keeping you busy since the last album? Um, well, I took on a side hustle in the last six years. The, okay. the side hustle is doing movie scores. Okay. I've done like six or seven movie scores um some some documentaries and stuff like that and uh you gotta have a side hustle in rock and roll you know what i mean and it's not like we're the king of the you know what i mean like rock is in a is in kind of like a smaller place than it was back when we first originally came out and you gotta have some side hustle in you and so i did six or seven movies and I did put out two singles, mm -hmm. Thoughts and Prayers and America, right. which I are beloved songs that I love very much. Um, and that kind of kind of hopefully bridged the gap for this long seven year period uh, for the algorithm to come out, which comes out August 25th. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you've been in the game for a little while now. And how did great hair give that away? No, you know what? The gray hair looks awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. It definitely like obviously you're not listening to me, but I think you should keep the gray hair. Oh yeah, there's oh, a, there's no going back now. <laughs> the hair dye has been packed up and put away. <laughs> I love it. Um how how do you how do you stay fresh musically and lyrically nowadays? Um I like sometimes I like to just well honestly like like I got this new keyboard and I played with it and boom that was face down <laughs> that's how I created face down and then I like bought another like I found a, an old guitar that I liked and dropped it down to C and and you know and did some sampling and used guitar samples for this song the drowning mm -hmm. and like boom that's the drowning you know and um then i called my friend zach monowitz and i said hey dude you got some crazy guitar parts for me you know and he said is is filter going to gent is filter going gent <laughs> And uh, I said, no, but, you know, why not? Why not experiment? So we he sent me some good songs that he had put aside and wrote. And uh, then I worked. I incorporated those into the record. And then I had my friend Sam Tenez, good friend Sam Tenez, come in and, and write, uh, help me write Obliteration and Burn Out the Sun and Threshing Floor. And um, Mark Jackson and uh, Johnny Radke and Ian Scott and uh, Brian Leeskang makes an appearance on this album. And um, yeah, yeah, it's it's it it took a lot to make this record. For for people who haven't heard the album yet, there there's some really heavy stuff on there, and you're gonna like it. You're gonna like it. Yes, there is some heavy stuff, and I love the heavy, and and I'm 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 I love the heavy, but I can also do the light. You know, we can get dreamy and weird. You know, I mean, my favorite bands are like The Clash, Guinea Puppy, Ministry, Pantera, um, The Cure, Deftones, um, Scarlord, Rez. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, I come, 
I come from Nine Inch Nails. So there's there's all kinds of stuff rolling around in my head, and and I just I just accentuate it. I try and and make it happen. I think it shows, which is good. It's always cool. shown on your music that you know you're willing to take chances, and but yet you know the the best thing is that even even with the new album, um, it still sounds like Filter. You know, you can listen to cool. short bus, and you can listen to the algorithm, and it's like, yeah, this is this is still filter, you know. Still the same dudes. Well, it's not the same dudes, but it's the same dude. <laughs> the same dude. Well, you're the one that matters the most in this. So that's I, you know, I hate to say it, but uh, from 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 your lips to God's ears. <laughs> Uh, so you, you do have some tour dates coming up uh, here in the states, and then uh, and then next year you got some stuff over in Europe. Uh, a lot of German uh, dates in Germany going on. Yep. Um, so in all all of your years of touring, is there anywhere that you haven't played yet that you're uh, you're hoping to one? I'd one love to go to South Africa. I'd love to play a gig in South Africa. Um, I'd love to go back to Japan. I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. And um, yeah, I it was uh, I I we played a gig in Moscow that was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. um, we've played some amazing shows. We played some amazing shows. The last great show though that I did, other than the Filter concert, the last big one that I'm really proud of is the Nine Inch Nails reunion back in September of last year. That was amazing. I was, um, uh, I assume that you never had like too much of a beef with Trent, right? Not, not like a big beef. No, you know? I mean, when I, when I quit, he was pissed and I was, you know, I was, you know, I was, he, you know <laughs> what I mean? He, I, I pissed him off pretty bad when I left. And, um, you know, but since then it's like, it's like, dude, how many people do you know from the block? You know what I mean? How many people do you know from Cleveland who have lived the same life as you that essentially do, I've done the same things as you, you know, he, we gotta be buddies, you know what I mean? Like, and he agrees, you know, he's, our kids play together. Our kids have played together, you know, like life is, is way too short to have any kind of animosity. And we had a lot of fun back in the day back when i was in nine inch nails it was a lot of fun we would kid and joke and goof off and and just have a and this the shows were amazing you know so there was a lot to celebrate you know there was definitely a lot to celebrate so that's why it was and plus you know walking out on stage twenty thousand people screaming you know and or it was probably thirty thousand. honestly it was so many people and I um I just started crying and I couldn't I couldn't sing the song Eraser and I got my shit together halfway through the song when it starts screaming when you have to start screaming the lyrics sure. and um you know and then like he had the band learn Hey Man Nice Shot and we played Hey Man Nice Shot and was that something you know, that you ever ever imagined happening? I just it just blew me away. His <laughs> generosity was just absolutely amazing, and he gave me he literally gave me you know nine inch nails for six minutes. You know what I mean? Like he's like take her out for a spin, dude. You know, and awesome. I'll just never forget it. It was definitely one of the highlights. It was absolutely definitely one of the highlights of my life for sure. No question. I love it. I love I love. Uh, well, when I saw that happening, um, not in person, obviously, but uh, when I saw the news of it, I was like, man, that's that's really freaking cool. You know, like a whole full circle yeah. moment. And and the fact that not just that you got up there, but that you got to play a filter song, too. Like That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And Cleveland, you know what I mean? Oh, this home, is where uh, we're from. We're from Cleveland. You know what I mean? Like it or not, that's our, <laughs> that's our, that's where we kicked around. That's where everything was created back there. You so, know? Do you, do you have any, any good crazy stories that you can tell from back in the day? <laughs> oh shit. I mean, how much time do you have? You know, <laughs> like I could tell you stories. Um, there was this one time we played a show in Pittsburgh and they, the concert was at like nine o'clock and then by, you know, 11 o'clock, they literally 
kick the band right out of the venue and they turn the whole venue into a into a disco okay that's cool and so like you know we played the concert and then they're like great kicked all our fans out and then they started a disco and um you had to come back and repay you know to come back in and we were just like hanging out at the disco and we had realized there's this thing where you take two beer bottles this is back when we were drunk okay. this is back when we were drinking and if you if you if you go up to someone's beer bottle and you hit it just right on the top you can blow the bottom of it out and it's like boop, and it comes out in a perfect circle like the bottom comes out in a perfect circle and like it's hysterical and so we we kept doing that and like to each other's beers and there was beer bottles all over the ground and then finally like i would spit beer like i would spit beer everywhere like constantly spitting beer on people and um lo and behold the bouncer from the disco uh grabs like grabs me and now i'm 130 pounds you know back then i was a skinny little fucker <laughs> and trent was exactly the same way he was probably 120 because he's a little shorter than me but he they pick up trent they pick up me and they literally throw us out onto the pavement of the club like the 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 back door right. it's like the movies you know like they literally threw us out onto yeah, the back get door it. get out of here <laughs> you fuckers and trent and i are literally like now we just sold this place out it was unbelievable the venue has no right to do like the venue has should have way more patience but we're just sitting there. I'm like upside down on the ground and I'm looking and Trent's like, like on his side and he's looking at me and we're just laughing. And like, we just looked at each other. Like we are literally taking over the world. Like, like this is the funniest thing in the world. We're like, we're taking over the world. Things are good. You know, the, the momentum of the band is happening. Shows are being sold out. The crowds are amazing. The fans are amazing. And here we are lying on the pavement, you know, because we, we can't seem to like, you know, control ourselves enough. It was just super funny. And, uh, you know, there's millions of those stories. There's, I have hundreds of those, you know, just getting kicked out of club, like getting thrown out of places just because we were just too obnoxious. And, you know, it was super fun. Those are the, the times that we live for, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I look back fondly. So I have never seen Filter Live. But I did see Army of Anyone live um, cool. in Vegas, actually. It was, uh, it's not the same thing. No, of course not. It's not, it's not the same. It's definitely not the same thing. Um, will there ever be another Army of Anyone album? Or The closest thing you're going to get is the song Summer Child. Okay. Now, you've heard Summer Child, right? Right. Summer Child, I wrote and was like, this is a perfect Army of Anyone song. So I literally had Ray Luzier play drums on it. Okay. And I was going to get Bobby and Dean to come in and play guitars and write guitar parts, but I couldn't get them in the same room. So I, I was like, fuck it. I'll just release it as a filter song. But that's about as close as you're going to get because half of Army of Anyone is the, is the people that made... Uh, this song summer child and um yeah so and you can tell yeah. like can't you tell it sounds kind of like an army of anyone song yeah you can tell. yeah um but, i mean if it never happens it never happens but you know we, at least we got an album um yeah i mean i wanted to like use that song as like a way to resell the vinyl Okay. And like put an extra bonus song on the on the and then reissue the whole record and see if we could do that, but I don't it just didn't, didn't happen. Just didn't didn't formulate. Well that's fine. Um so in the the early days of Mr. Patrick, what mm -hmm. what got you interested in, in music and, and wanting to be a musician? My dad played a record 
through his brand new stereo system in 1974. It was a big stereo. He he was really into the hi fi's and stuff like that in the 70s. And he played the record Hot August Nights by Neil Diamond. <laughs> and I would hear it and it was just joy. It was so fucking good to hear this music. And then he played Led Zeppelin and then he played Pink Floyd. And then, and it was just like, what is going on? And my, my sister Karen had an acoustic guitar and I'm like, they're using that thing to make that music, you know? And, um, and, um, fascination, uh, it just, it just fascination. It just <laughs> blew my mind. I was probably four or five years old and um yeah got really into just listening to music and then at around nine i finally got my guitar i begged my mom for christmas i said can i get a guitar and she said sure you can get a guitar you can learn how to play it and then i learned how to play it enough and uh started writing songs and started you know high school bands and stuff like that and it was basically just a love for music you know what what was your first concert neil diamond neil diamond okay so neil diamond 1977 at the richfield coliseum in cleveland ohio life-changing amazing <laughs> it was amazing it was an amazing show and he sang great he's an amazing performer and uh then the next one was my brother robert you know who was the actor terminator 2 guy um he took me to kiss oh yeah <laughs> well a little then, different than neil diamond <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing that my brother did, though, for me was when he said he came back from college and he was like, I've had enough of this Paul Stanley shit. I want you to listen to this new band called The Clash. Here's London Calling, you know, and boom, I was punk. Like at 10 years old, I was automatically punk. I was, I was like, OK, where's the Mohawk? So, so uh, Robert helped your musical journey along the way totally he was always like play that guitar rich forget about because i always wanted to play football he's like you're too damn skinny <laughs> you're too damn skinny for football play the guitar rich play that and i and so i did that's awesome um has so i i assume then he's he's been a big uh big supporter all along the way all through your journey yeah he's always been he's always been into my music he's always been like yeah dude keep doing filter <laughs> keep doing it brother yeah he's cool um when, when you initially had left nine inch nails and you were starting filter um did you did you have any any inkling or any expectation that you might also be a, a you know a bigger rock <laughs> band can can lightning strike twice right did, yeah did, I, um, did, did you feel that that it could happen i was depending on it i mean i was i mean like when i left i was like okay you really fucking better have a backup plan and you know when i i got signed to warner brothers there was two weeks where i was wandering around like what am i gonna do what am i gonna do and then i i had warner brothers was like well we love hey man nice shot and we love the the music you're doing why don't you just sign with us and i was like okay and so boom i signed this big record contract with warner brothers and like just focused really hard on the record and um and then when we released it it got released on the demon knight soundtrack mm -hmm. and it took off it, it it went they didn't promote it at all it just took off radio stations started playing it like out the wazoo and so we had to hurry up and and rush the record being mixed by ben gross and they moved other artists out of the way and quickly released the filter uh record in 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 uh whenever it was like august that year or whatever it came out when did short bus come out i should look that up um, but it came out, it came out that summer. No, it was like May 10th is when it came out. It was like May 9th or something, um, right around my birthday. Um, but yeah, you know, it was scary. 
you know, I, 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 I had balls of steel, you know, <laughs> like I, I was quitting a sure thing, you know, something that I'd worked really hard on, you know, with Trent, you know. Well, was there um, a lot of little things building up or was it just like that, that one little incident that was just like, you know what, I'm fucking done. Like, yeah, there was a lot of it, but I mean, there, there was there was there was there was a, a few moments, you know, where it was like, man, this is just not what I want to do with my life. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it 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 came to a head, you know. Well, I would say that you made a, a good decision because here we are, all these years later, you're putting out what your eighth album. This is my eighth record. And I'm a big boy. <laughs> I'm not sure I understand. I love it. Oh, shit. Um, oh, is, is Siri talking to you now? Siri, yeah, I hit, I hit the watch on, on my console. Um, so is there, is there any one album or one song in particular that you're just like super proud of? Like this is the definitive. Oh, I'm really pumped on this record. Yeah. I'm really, really excited about the algorithm, and I can't wait for everybody to hear it. August 25th. Ditto. Major yeah, ditto. it's going to be... Uh, it's gonna, have you heard it? Yeah, I already, I already listened to it uh, last yeah. week, actually. And cool. Uh, I've, I've been sitting on the, the review. I, I reviewed it last weekend, and cool. uh, I've been sitting on it because I wanted to send it in along with this, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about it, and I'm, I'm, I want people to hear this album. So, cool, thank you. I'll be spreading that out. Um, I appreciate it. Are there going to be like uh, how how long do you think you might tour for this album? As much as we can. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I would love to to do something in the fall. I'm not really sure what we're thinking about doing there. But uh, the Rob Zombie tour is going to be a blast. Right. So that's pretty much the big tour that we're going to be doing this year. Now, Rob, Zombie. Rob and Alice are playing here, but you're not going to be on that, are you? Is that a during? Is that like when is that? I think it's. I think it's October. Yeah, it's like October twenty yeah, or something. They're they're doing special Halloween shows together. Okay. So we're not going to be on that one. All right. Well, well, we're on the Freaks on Parade tour. When when filters... that's why you have to say that. You have to say it like Freaks on Parade. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got to throw in the yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if if filter comes to Vegas next year, I'm going. I'm going to that. Because I want to see you. Should okay. definitely go. It's going to be amaze balls. Did you see Sick New World? No, uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, one, I was working. I, I'm actually working right now. I'm on, I'm on my uh, lunch break, so I can talk to you. Right. Uh, but I was working, and tickets were crazy. And also, I don't do well in the heat, which is funny because I live in Vegas, but I just. <laughs> I don't yeah. do it on the heat, so it was hotter than Hades. Right. Um, is there anything else left for the fans that you need to say? Yeah, uh, we are psyched. We love you. We want you to hear this record, and um, August twenty fifth. The algorithm. The algorithm, baby pop. Could be the best filter album ever. You know, it, it could, could be. be. I think so. I think it might be. It's up there with title. I think it's up there with Amalgamut. So I want to say, Richard, thank you very much for giving me your time. I appreciate you, and I appreciate the music. And good luck on everything, and have fun on the upcoming tours. You got it, sir. Thank you for having me, and I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Hope to see you in the future. You got it. We'll talk soon. And if and if you do come to a show, go backstage and say hi to me. <laughs> if I can, just, just if let, I can find a way backstage, just, I'll go. Just let Joe know. Just let Joe, the publicist, know that you want you want to go backstage and say hi. Okay. She'll she'll hook it up. I'll I'll ask them. Okay, brother. Right. We'll talk in a bit. Thank you, sir.